Dr. Rachel Winston, and I want to welcome you to this edition of the Mathematics video series on QR codes, ISBN numbers, and cloud computing. We will start with QR codes. A black and white square matrix of black squares on a white background is called a quick response or QR code. A two-dimensional encrypted array that looks more like a Pac-Man game or computer art is readable by a QR barcode reader or camera-enabled app found on a phone, tablet, or computer. QR codes originate originating in Japan have been around for two decades, but were mostly used for tracking orders, products, shipments, and vehicles. Often now, they are found embedded in advertising on websites, commercials, newspapers, and packages, although they are most recently being used in classrooms. Educators are creating QR codes and putting them on plain paper assignments. If you put a URL on a sheet of paper, it cannot open. But by scanning the QR code, the URL pops up, which may be convenient for a quiz that's on a website. In another application, a small card is handed to a student with a QR code. The student scans the QR code, and the syllabus shows up on the electronic device. Thus copying sometimes hundreds of sheets of paper is eliminated. Information given as a URL, text, or image is scanned and transferred onto the electronic device. A free QR code app can be downloaded in a minute on your electronic device so that when you hold up the QR code to the device, the coded information is quickly transferred to the screen. Most smartphones, like iPhones and Android phones or Windows phones, have apps that read QR codes. Access to the internet is required. Unlike barcodes on product labels, QR codes can contain a calendar of important dates, an instruction manual, a schedule of classes, a painting, or a link to a website, address book, video, or GPS location. As more people use their phone for purposes other than making a call or texting a family member or friend, they will search for and download the app to open QR codes. Marketing professionals can capitalize on quick and inexpensive advertising by using QR codes. They require little advertising space, money, or equipment. One way to entice customers to use a QR code is to offer a discount or a coupon. You could put a QR code on your business card that opens your resume or your contact information. QR codes are easy to make too. Find an app or a website that generates a QR code or find a magazine review of various generators. Some sites have both free QR readers and free QR creators. Next, we will discuss ISBN numbers. Typically, books are cataloged and reviewed by ISBN numbers. These are 10-digit numbers. The way it is typically explained is hard to understand, but I will try to explain the idea a little bit more clearly. So, we know that each book is assigned an International Standard Book Number, or ISBN number. This is a 10-digit number with each digit denoted as X sub 1, X sub 2, X sub 3, X sub 4, and so on. The check digit that checks to make sure you have the right number is the 10th digit. Again, we call this the check digit. We calculate the check digit by using multipliers for each of the first nine digits. So we have 1 times the first digit, 2 times the second, 3 times the third digit, and so on all the way to 9. We are using modulo 11, so it looks like this. Notice in the formula that the tenth digit is the sum of the multipliers times the number, and then that is in modulo 11. To review, all ISBN numbers have 10 total digits, but to make sure the number is correct, there is a digit just to check, called a check digit. 
That should be the 10th digit of the ISBN number, or the check digit. Let's walk through an example. Find the appropriate check digit for this ISBN number. If the check digit is 10, use the letter X instead of 10. So we have the number 08387-2615. First, you must find the check digit, which is the 10th digit of the ISBN number. You are given the first nine digits, which are 08387-2615. I just wrote it in groups of three so that you could see the nine digits better. Now, you take one times the first digit, or one times zero, two times the second digit, or two times eight, three times the third digit, or three times three, and so on. You can see this example below. When you are done, add all of those digits together. You get 199. This is 199 modulo 11. To find 199 modulo 11, divide 11 into 199. The remainder is the answer. Since the remainder is 1, therefore the check digit is 1. Computers want to make sure that people do not input the number incorrectly. In case they do, they want a way to check to make sure that the correct book is sent to the purchaser. So from now on, you will be thankful that ISBN numbers have a tenth digit called a check digit so that you get the right book. The need for better security in this expanding digital age has never been more important. Cloud computing continues to increase. There are two main factors for this. One, storage of files in the cloud can be accessed from any computer. And two, software in the cloud can be updated at any time. Yet by leaving your files in a cloud, Anyone who can access the cloud has access to your information. Encryption is important for the cloud service provider and for those who put their files in the cloud. Outside of cloud-based computing, understanding how and why cryptographic tools are necessary and what to ask regarding digital security could save you from identity theft, monetary loss, or intellectual property theft. Remember that cryptography is merely a tool used by humans and fallible by a code created and possibly infected by humans. Critical analysis is important in every step of the way. Any weak link, like an individual who answers calls to help those people locked out of the system, can unlock the door to your information. Without ensuring that your confidential information is secure, hackers can raid your files, steal your money, and listen in on your phone, Skype, or email conversations. Cryptography through authentication, password hashes, voice encryption are some of the means to prevent cloning cell numbers, PIN access numbers, access codes, and credit cards. However, each individual can do their part to protect themselves by creating a virtually unbreakable random password that includes numbers, symbols, and both lower and upper case letters. Cryptography is a huge industry. Digital security is merely one subset. The price is charged by those who work on and fix security systems are nearly inelastic in economic terms. This means that when your identity is stolen or a computer breaks down or a virus is eating away at your information, you will pay whatever someone charges. It is also important to remember that only a small fraction of information is securely transmitted and few people are aware of the risks to even take precautions. Many Wi-Fi hotspots are unencrypted and you are unprotected in most local coffee shops. All information sent over wireless network that does not request a password can be read by someone who has a few dollars to buy the tools. You are quite literally opening up your phone or computer for someone else to read. 
This education offers you the opportunity to think about the evolution of a revolution in which society has become increasingly reliant on technology, digital communication, and cloud-based biomanagement. It is up to you to know the risks of an unsecure network and ensure that you are protected. The more you know, the more you can prevent problems and facilitate fixes. Otherwise, you leave the access to everything you have in the hands of someone else. For those who want nearly guaranteed employment, cryptography will be the foundation for all com companies engaging in e-commerce, which will be nearly every company. Actually, all STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics career areas will grow. In the past 10 years, STEM careers have grown three times as fast as non-STEM careers. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, employment in professional scientific and technical services will grow by 28.8%, with an expected 2.1 million new jobs opening in these areas by 2016. However, an even bigger growth, 38.3%, will occur in computer systems design and related services. The BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, predicts that 80% of the fastest growing fields require the mastery of mathematics, computers, and the sciences. Expect many positions to open in these fields. That is all for this edition of the Mathematics video series on QR codes, ISBN numbers, and cloud computing. This is Dr. Rachel Winston signing out.